you turn up on set for the first day and you have a crew of about 30 people all standing around looking at you going, so where do you want to start? That's a very <laughs> vulnerable place to be in. So Hs for Happiness follows uh, a 12 year old girl who has boundless enthusiasm, but her family's in a bit of trouble. They're suffering terrible grief after the loss of her younger sister. So she's desperately trying to bring happiness back into the family. And along the way, she meets Douglas Benson from another dimension. He's the new boy at school, who's also going through a few troubles. And she decides that she's there to fix his as well. So she takes on that task. So she's presented with quite a few challenges. Honesty is very important to Candace. She's a quirky girl, and sometimes that honesty gets her into trouble. You know your weird eye, Miss Banford? How it spins out of control like a punctured balloon? Douglas Benson from another dimension. He says it's so hyperactive, it should be on Ritalin. For me, the film is all through Candace's eyes. You know, it's her story, it's her world. And so to have a slightly heightened world and saturated in colour was really important because it's how she covers up the dark undercurrent that is in her life, that is grief. We spent a long time, of course, just picking through the script and looking at each scene and, and the relationship she has with each character. And so she feels very comfortable with rich Uncle Brian. She always places her centre in his world because really that is her touchstone. Dad and Mum is a very different relationship, so the perspective of how she sees them is slightly off centre. With Douglas Benson, it's centre because she recognises a kindred spirit. She sees the good in everyone and in the world around her and from a very unique perspective. So we created three worlds, and this is working with Nikki Gardner, of course, as well, the designer, who had a lot of input in the colours and design. There is her world at school, which has colourful characters and the teacher has an eye that spins around and around and is out of control. So there's these quirky, colourful little characters in that school. Then there is the town that is charming and almost old world in its charm. Everyone in that town has a unique, particular role that adds to it and she admires and she loves and she chats with everyone. Then there is the third world, which is her home, which is a home of stillness, silence and grief. No one is talking to anyone in that house. So all these little quirks and habits of hers played a big part in framing and composition for this and in the, in the design. The other universes are separate from this, not by space or time, but a different dimension. I came through that dimension. How? It involves manipulating dimensions and invoking gravity, of course. How? I jumped out of a tree. High tech. You always hope the audience will pick up on the funny moments, will be moved by the sad moments. And I think, you know, within the editing process, that was a um, huge learning curve for me because it's fascinating how snipping out a look or adding a different look can change the mood of the whole scene and story. And Jo Scott is phenomenal with what she does and how she can read a script and read a scene, how she can heighten it emotionally by finding those little moments in a look. And pace, how you pace it. And when you put the brakes on for a moment, let the audience sit back and breathe and then make them chase the story again. I always think it's important for an audience is to keep them chasing the story. I never want them to catch up. I think if they catch up, you've lost them. So when do we turn the corner? When do we surprise them? And hitting those beats throughout the script and the story was really fascinating to see how that works in the editing process and how it can be adjusted and how it can work to your advantage. We had a phone call earlier today from a Mr. Dawson. Ah, oh, that's nice. Not really. He said you wanted to divorce us. Apparently the only reason he didn't take the case is because he's a house conveyancer. Being selected for Berlin was incredibly exciting because I think it's the right home for Hs for Happiness in terms of the international festivals and it's such a well-respected festival so you really are amongst great quality filmmakers there and so diverse. But it was even more exciting to learn a couple of weeks later that we'd been selected to open the Generation K Plus section. So not only are we in the Berlin Film Festival, we are opening the Generation K Plus and that's such a huge honour and we're very excited by it. I really hope that young people and families 
find themselves in the characters and walk out feeling lighter, having a laugh because I think the world is very mean-spirited at the moment and I think we need some heartfelt stories and I think we need to go and be entertained, forget the day, have a laugh at ourselves and other people and celebrate and elevate difference.